Welcome friends in Monet Cafe. It's time to get a little bluesy today. I sort of like this music. Today I'm continuing the beginner series and I'm calling this Use Your Artistic License. Often um, we try to just recreate a photo and uh, I think it's really neat when you can learn to alter it in ways to make it more artistically pleasing. So join me as I paint from this reference photo that is of a field uh, actually and at my parents' property. It's just a, a beautiful field across from their home and I liked a lot about the composition but I didn't like all that green and I also thought that I might be able to make a road out of that path that looks like a mower came around and cut the grass there. So join me as I use my artistic license to make some changes to this photo. And if you haven't done so already, you may want to go back and uh, check out my very first in this beginner series video on simplifying things. And we do that by creating a little notan or value study. Um, and I do have uh, where I did this particular photo, I did the value study. So check that out if you like. And some of you may have already seen, I'm so excited, I now have a Patreon account. Uh, thanks to a lot of your suggestions, I'm excited to see where this is going to grow and I'm loving just the intimate group of artists that have already become patrons on my page. Now, bear with me for just a couple of more minutes while I share with you some of the exciting new products I have available on the Monet Cafe Art Store. Hello, Monet Cafe Art Family. I'm so happy today because I got one of my first designed t-shirts that's now available uh, connected with my YouTube channel. Teespring is a company that allows YouTube, partners with YouTube, to allow uh, channel owners such as myself, Monet Cafe, to offer products. And I majored in graphic design many years ago, and but I still rem have some of those skills. And um, so I've been designing some art, artistic or artist themed t-shirts and it's a lot of fun for me because I love to show my artist style when I'm out and about and um, I'm real happy with the Teespring products um, so far. The, um, the one that I've got here, this is a, I think it's called a flowy tank top. I don't like tight fitting clothes so I like things that are loose and flowy. They do offer a, um, a tighter fit tank top um, but I like this one. I'm a medium just so you know and I think um, from what I saw I got one other shirt they run a little large, but I like that. So anyway, so it's really nice. I like how it's just kind of loose and soft. And uh, I'll share some of the other uh, t-shirts when they come in. Probably the one that'll be the main one is the Happy Painting t-shirt that um, is like my slogan at the end of the YouTube channel. So I love to say Happy Painting. So I've got a lot more designs and everything. If you want to check them out, just go down underneath any video and uh, right under the description section is some little links you can click on. It doesn't matter which product you click, you can get to any of them. They come in all different sizes, styles, shapes, uh, colors for men, for women, for babies. We even have onesies and uh, different products such as coffee mugs and tote bags. So that's enough self-marketing there, but I'm just excited and I thought you guys might be too. All right, let's get started. Okay, time to paint. Now I have my typical setup here. I've got my reference photo. I am going to be including a clickable link in the About section if you would like to use this reference photo to paint along with. Now I have a piece of, I think this is an 8 inch by 6 inch piece of UART sanded paper. I have many videos where I share about this paper. It's a great paper because it takes water. Um, it does allow for other wet mediums, which I will show you in this video. Now, once again, I am using the watercolor pencils that I used in the previous two beginner videos. I really like um, the ease of using these, but you can use anything that you like to do this wet underpainting technique that I'm going to do before uh, the actual pastel application. Now, I'm doing something in this video that I mentioned in the previous one. Um, I actually used a lot more colors for the underpainting in the previous one and I really wanted to stick to more of the just some basic values like a dark I'm all in the warm side of the color wheel and this one is more of a, a magenta it's it's just darker it's for my darker values now what you see I'm doing here uh, see I'm making little dots um, often if I have a surface that is equal in proportion to the reference photo I already kind of can get some quick little drawing marks um, for, for um, getting the actual uh, 
basics of the drawing correct by just putting little dots. They're going to match up in other words. I know that that tree, you can't see the whole thing in this video, I know that the tree comes gosh almost halfway down the paper because I'm just I'm always looking at the edges of the reference image to kind of compare. Again this works well if you're working with the same proportions. So that's kind of my little system of measuring and I think a lot of you guys probably like these real-time videos because these are little things that you can see when I am um, have it slowed down like this. If I had this sped up, you wouldn't even notice me doing the little dots and the measuring. So that might be a little tip or something that would help you. Getting a good, I, I mean we do want to keep it sketchy and uh, painterly, but um, with certain things you do want to get the core things right, especially when it comes to perspective and just the way things work in nature mathematically. So um, so that's just a little tip of how I like to make little marks like that. Um, so now I'm back to talking about the colors that I've used with these watercolor pencils. I've got a dark which is here um, and then I think I have, did I have three more I think, but I have like a, a richer red then a medium um, value orange and then a lighter yellow. So I'm really just using like four values here to get the basics in before I do the water application or alcohol I think I use in this case. So and again you do not have to use watercolor pencils for this. You can use pastel. I have a lot of videos where I show using your actual pastels to do an underpainting with like just a little value study, maybe the warm value study like I'm doing here, and then you can use water or alcohol on your pastels. And what it does, it creates that loose impressionistic beginning to get started and uh, you just tend to loosen up a lot more with an underpainting. I, I love underpaintings. I don't always use a wet underpainting but I almost always tone my paper uh, completely before I start getting uh, more of the basics of the power or the um, the direction of the painting going. I just love to cover up that big surface with some color. Um, and now I'm using that red that I mentioned. I'm getting and typically if you're going to use three values uh, for a warm underpainting, I would use a red, like a darker red, a medium um, orange, and a, a yellow. Those are going to be three different values. Now I'm back to using the darker one. I'm going ahead, like I said, I used four here. But typically you'll use, if you do those three I mentioned, you'll use the red for the things that are vertical. You'll use the orange for the uh, field or the grass or the land because that's going to be the medium value. And you'll use the yellow for the sky. That's a general, very basic breakdown of the values in a landscape. Vertical things are the darkest. Uh, flat things on the land are usually a l lighter, uh, medium value, um, and perspective and distance has a lot to do with how values change, but these are the basics. And the sky is like almost always the lightest thing, unless you're doing a night painting or something. So I'm keeping this real time, but I'm going to let you guys just check out this process uh, while I add that bluesy music back again. Um, and I appreciate a lot of your comments about the music. I just think it's fun, okay? If you're going to have like blank time with nobody talking or anything, you know, why not have some music? If you don't like it, just go ahead and turn it down. All right, here we go. More painting fun. I'll be back when I add the water, or in this case, I think alcohol.
wanted to add here that this is a point where I'm doing kind of the point of this particular video. I, I mean, there's a lot of little artistic uh, lessons and things I'm, I go over in this, but one of the points was using your artistic license. And I wanted to turn that green field more into a road. So I'm using some directional lines, kind of sweeping and energetic to give that sense of the road. I thought I'd go ahead and add in um, just some of the darks um, that look like um, I, I, I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to keep it looking like it was an uh, area that had been recently mown, like mowing the grass, or if I was going to turn it into a road, and I do, as you can see from the beginning painting, turn it into a road. So these are some of the decisions that you can make, and um, a lot of times uh, it's good to have a plan, but don't be so strict on the plan that, you know, sometimes we do something and we get this unexpected little thing happen. We're like, oh wow let me make the road do this you know so it's kind of fun to be able to loosen up and explore and change things now with all of those values in place i am now going to use my little technique and let me see i think i did use alcohol in this where i use alcohol a brush and a paper towel you know i may have used water in this case i'm not sure it doesn't really matter either one works um and i'm using uh, notice how I keep my brush rather flat to the board. Instead of having it um, perpendicular to the board and using the tip, I kind of lay it on its side to use it. And it helps cover big areas better. And it also, for me, it helps me to paint a little more loosely rather than just holding it straight up and down with the little tip there. So I'm just keeping still a very loose um, feel, just giving suggestions of trees at this point. And um, I do rinse the brush out between value changes so that it doesn't get muddy. It's okay if one bleeds into another. It's okay if it gets drippy. It will add to the spontaneity of it and the loose feel, loose impressionistic feel. But in general, you know, kind of keep things a little bit separated so you remember why you put them there. <laughs> so I think I will speed this part up just a little bit. I mean, you get the general idea and then we'll get to the pastel application. Right, here we go now we've got a nice um, value study a warm underpainting that's going to really make these colors vibrate uh, and and just have such uh, so much more interest than if we just use greens and blues uh, now I decided to give a little bit of a, a teal blue color to the sky I do add some other um, colors in with this I like to uh, give a little bit of a variety of sky color. I mean, it's really, there's so many colors in nature all playing off of each other um, that it, it just creates a, a more beautiful painting if we emulate what nature already does. Okay, so I end up adding, I think, a little bit of lavender to this. And before it's all done, I add some warmer, like that little warm peachy color, uh, down at the horizon line. Now, at the horizon, typically on a kind of a regular day, um, near the horizon, the sky is usually lighter, um, and it's usually darker in value up towards the heavens. Now, I'm using a, a little piece of pipe foam insulation here. I just wanted to go ahead and blend the sky in, so I kind of get that... Um, that creamy color. Oh, I blended a little bit of the red. Um, some of the creamy color of the paper co covered, kind of like I did with the underpainting. Okay, so I don't have that UART beige color shining through. But here's where I am. Uh, back to my um, description of uh, darker values usually are in the upper heavens. Lighter values are down towards the horizon line. And cooler colors are typically towards the heavens and warmer colors are typically towards the horizon line. So that's why I use that little peachy color you saw before um, kind of above the trees a little bit more to lighten it up and warm it up a little bit. Now I'm using this kind of a, a little bit of a dull gray blue um, for those middle uh, distance trees. Now I'm comparing values here. That blue, it may look like it's the same color. It's actually a little lighter in value. Trees further away, um, uh, things further away, lighten in value and cool in color temperature. Now, a lot of times I'll do the same value for all the trees and then I lighten it up layer with, uh, later with what I put on top of them. But in this case, I, uh, 
I ended up kind of changing the value a little bit on the middle trees and the background trees. Now I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just kind of scumbling in. If you don't know that term, scumbling is just almost like scribbling. You're just kind of scribbling in little shapes. I'm looking at some of the lights and the darks in the tree. Uh, you can kind of see the bottom part of the reference photo to the upper right there and you see there's darks and there's lights and everything and you can you can tackle that later with your layers or you can kind of start to get them in as you lay it down. There's all kinds of different painting techniques and um, you know I've learned that it's great to try to emulate other artists with their techniques um, to learn but in time you'll end up with your own technique. Um, I'm finding that I've started to kind of change some of my techniques. I've emulated other artists for a long time and, and I realized I like that. Um, I mean, I might enjoy that style, but I've kind of come up with some of my own ways of doing things over time. So those things will happen. Now I am getting, as you can see, I'm working mostly with this darker blue right now. And I got in all of those, what I think are going to be either, um, edges of the grasses going around or little trails or paths within the road. Um, to kind of just get those darks in right away. So that's all I'm focusing on right now is the darks. Now I've got a darker value. I think it's a purple and um, I'm going over again just scumbling in. Uh, you never want to draw leaves and sh I shouldn't say never but individual leaves especially when things are far away are you're just not going to see them and you don't really need to get that much detail. Our brains figure out what a tree is by mass and shape and value and color. Um, so um, that's something that's great. You don't have to draw individual leaves. It's really time saving. <laughs> um, so working more with the dark values and the darker values, this is the darkest value I use in the whole painting, are going to be the things that are closer um, and things that are in shadow. Um, and like that side of the, the little edge of that grass that I'm doing there. Um, the sun in this case, that's another thing you want to keep in mind. Where's the sun? And in my instance here, the sun is to the upper right. And so there's going to be a shadow side to those grasses that I did. The, the sweeping grasses on the upper part of that road that sweep around behind the tree. Now with basic values in place and my darkest values in place, it's time to start layering this painting and, and uh, building upon this foundation. I'm not sure why I used the red there. I just I think I wanted to get more of that sweeping motion kind of going. Oh, I wanted to raise the level there because I had my road a little too low. I end up altering that a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start kind of laying in. Now we've got most of the uh, warmer tones in or all of the warmer tones for the base. And now it's time to get the, the grassy colors. Now you notice in the reference photo, that's a lot of green. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing there. I'm, I'm raising that level. Um, also too, I'm using a piece of pipe foam insulation here. I did want to kind of blur out those middle ground trees and I think even the little ones in the back there. Just that's going to give that illusion of distance because you don't see detail when things are further away. All right, so now is where I'm just going to gradually start laying in color. I know that um, there's going to be a little bit of a cooler and a darker greens on that side of the, um, how do I want to word this? There's, you know, like when there's a road, there's usually grassy edges. So there's a little, um, almost like a shelf. <laughs> and uh, typically it's going to be darker on those sides like that. So uh, I'm just kind of using my value and my color to um, make that believable. Now I'm adding a little bit more. Now we, I am going to have some greens in these trees and the green I'm using here is a cooler green because they're further away. I'll use warmer greens um, in the uh, tree uh, that's closer to me just for highlights. Um, now here's where I'm just laying down a, it's a little bit of a warmer green, but I'm getting those horizontal um, strokes that's going to emulate a field that's far away. And now I'm going to add, I know that road, I still want it to have grass on it and uh, maybe have bits of uh, rock and earth and things kind of peeking through. And now I'm actually brushing out uh, a bit of that pastel. I realized that curve underneath the tree was higher than I had it. So um, that's a neat thing. You can, pastels are really uh, more alterable than people realize. So right there is where I kind of brought that, um, 
the bottom of the tree up a little bit higher. I wanted the road a little wider there, in other words. So I just kind of reestablished some of the darks, and voila, there you go. You can erase pastels, you know? So you've got a lot of versatility still with pastels, so you don't always have to be so afraid. I mean, we want our marks to be purposeful, but um, it is nice to know we can change things. Okay, here's where I'm um, layering in that green. I'm, I'm kind of trying to give the impression of a little flatness there on the tops of the grasses and um, just checking and uh, working with some of the uh, direction of how the land's going to be laying. You see I already am getting the impression of flatness beside that little ridge of grass. Now I'm going to work on a little bit more of that layering of grasses in the distance and I'm using a cooler blue. There was some of the the warmer grasses I could tell were in there, but because it's far in the distance, I'm cooling it off a bit there. And I'm going to continue to work here while you guys check out my process of building upon this painting. And keep in mind too that I myself am using my artistic license here, so I'm kind of exploring and um, working and altering things and staying open to what happy surprises may await me. I often find that as I paint. I'm like, oh, look at that. Maybe I could do this here. <laughs> so enjoy while I paint, and um, I will be back for more commentary soon.
sometimes you just have to take a break for your sweet kitties. <laughs> my hubby brought in my little Dusty. Some of you may remember the video that I made um, a while back. She's, uh, she's about a year old now, but I found her. We've had so much rain, uh, or actually last season, and uh, she was literally about to drown in a puddle outside of the field in front of our house. And I just heard the sweetest little meow while I was outside and um, found this little clump of wet fur. And so there's my sweet Dusty. She likes hanging out in my studio with me. I'm reestablishing some of the darks. So I've got kind of a, a basic um, design in here and now I'm able to look at okay how uh, are these grasses growing beside the road and now is when I'm going to start giving it more um, uh, definition. So once again that is the edge of those tall grasses there and so I'm making them darker. I am going to lighten those up but I'm, I'm giving that indication of a road with, with a hedge of grasses kind of beside them. So, um, <clears throat> and adding these darks in definitely helps give that illusion. And again, I've still got some darks in at the foreground because I'm gonna make kind of some ruts in the road. And um, the neat thing about roads is that, I mean, of course they do have um, some basic design elements like usually you have two uh, ruts where the tires go and you have a middle area with grass in the middle but roads like lots of things in nature have a lot of spontaneity to them they have uh, pebbles here and there they have little grasses and weeds peeking up through um, you know certain spots and um, so you want to make sure your road is a little bit wild and free <laughs> following a basic road design but not so detailed that it becomes stiff and predictable, you know, so I, I think having things a little bit unpredictable can be a good thing. I'm adding a little bit more of the, um, like that warm uh, magenta color uh, that's indicating shadows. Um, <clears throat> even though it's a warmer color, I just thought it would work nice because typically shadows are cooler. Um, but you know, sometimes you can, again, use your artistic license. And the more you paint, the more you get more confidence with color. Uh, I'm I'm always, I think, pushing the envelope a bit, maybe too much sometimes. <laughs> now I'm doing a little layering that's going to indicate like the top shelf of those grasses, the um, grasses that you just kind of see the tops of them. Um, and again, I'm going to paint a little while while I build upon this road design concept and uh, hopefully you're learning as you're watching.
Okay, now you can see the road has started to take shape. I have developed like the center part of the road, usually where the tires aren't hitting and it's gonna have some wispy grasses and uh, leaving the ruts where the tires are a little bit more rocky. Um, I mean, even though this was Florida, I happen to like roads in um, like North Carolina and Georgia that have the red clay and the earthy, real pretty earthy color. That's why I decided to keep those warm tones underneath because in Florida, you don't get those beautiful colors. You get pretty much just sand, <laughs> but it's all still beautiful too. Now I'm adding the cooler colors here on the uh, left side of the grasses because that's the opposite side from where the sun, my source of light is, is on the upper right. So cooler things are going to be in the shadows uh, on the opposite side of the sun and um, so you can see kind of how this is developed and I've got some purples in the road and um, again the point of this whole lesson was just to use your artistic license explore have fun and uh, while if you're you know because the focus of these uh, videos that I'm doing this series is for beginners while because I, I know this because I did it. While you might get overly frustrated when you're first exploring um, using your artistic license or playing with color, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And But they're not really mistakes. They're just another cog in the wheel of learning. So everything is just moving more towards you becoming a better artist. And uh, consider it, like I said in my... Uh, I actually just put a video on my Patreon page, oh, and I want to talk about that a little bit too, about just time to play. That sometimes it's good to have a, a focus when you paint, P do something small, just have a particular little goal in mind, and think, you know, it's fine if I just throw this away. And that way we end up having more fun with it, we don't get so fussy and, and hard on ourselves, you know? So um, I encourage play time and, um, and just enjoying the process of painting. Um, and also, too, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Patreon account, and, and uh, it's so new to me still, and I'm so grateful to the, at this point, I think I've got 36 patrons, and I, I'm just blown away. That just blesses me so much. And right now, it's mostly a support um, tier where you guys are supporting um, the fact that I've actually made over 168 free videos on this YouTube channel over the years. And um, you guys, many of you ask how you could help support the channel. And so that's the neat thing. I have the first tier at $5 a month. So for about the cost of a cup of coffee per month, um, you can help to continue Monet Cafe and literally bring art to the world. I mean, Monet Cafe is seen worldwide. There are so many people who don't have the resources that I have personally had in the United States or maybe in a position that I've been in my life in the past where I just didn't have the resources, the time or the money to go do any art instruction outside of my home. So, um, but I wanted to add, not only is it just a support for Monet Cafe and you know me personally being able to uh, provide better videos and more videos. It's also something where I am going to be doing things just specifically and specially for my patrons on my patron page. I'm going to have some um, lessons on there that won't be on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm also considering doing maybe some personal critiques and you know so all of this is in the developmental stage for me but you know how I know it's going to all work out. I don't stress about it because Monet Cafe is what it is, the success that it is today because of you. I have literally just um, done what you guys have asked. <laughs> I've just like let you guys lead and uh, I find that's a great way to work and a great way to provide what the viewers want. So that's kind of the goal with the Patreon page. Uh, it is a blessing for me um, because I am going to, I have a personal goal when I reach a certain level to be able to get a better studio light. It's a few hundred dollars and um, that will really help me right now. We're, we, This is a personal note. We spend a lot right now personally on just still getting our lives back together since we had to totally relocate after the flooding of our home in 2017. We're still renovating a small home that we're living in right now and currently building a garage because we haven't had any outside um, storage, um, covered storage, I should say. So after, when I'm not painting or working on my bookkeeping business, I am building with my husband. <laughs> I've often said I need to create a YouTube video for that. <laughs> I bet it would be very successful because my husband, oh my gosh, he is just 
so gifted and so talented, but at the same time, we're just two people doing this, so it does take some time. So anyway, no, enough of that stuff. But uh, I do love the personal element of Monet Cafe and how I get to share on here, and you guys share with me. Oh my goodness, I love hearing um, your stories and truly developing an art family. That's how I feel anyway. All right, so this is pretty much finished up, and uh, I hope you will explore and use your artistic license and have some fun and don't be afraid to experiment and don't be so hard on yourself so anyway you guys are such a blessing to me and i do have more beginner videos on the way i have a couple more that are already filmed so i'll have them ready for you very soon all right guys thanks so much and happy painting